Hey there, Sharon Hornelstrom here. Slow and steady or fast and furious. I'm the person that has to uh, get calm rocks, calm stones to slow me down and calm me down. So obviously my internal clock, my internal battery, my pace of talking tends to go pretty quickly. I'm pretty direct. Uh, other people, slow, calm, analytical, thoughtful. We're all different, right? Each and every one of us are unique and special and have strengths and weaknesses and we're taught, we're taught, we, we teach people, we, we beat it into them. Oh, you have to fix your weaknesses, especially in corporate America. I remember performance appraisals. You do all these things well, and then they would focus on the two or three things that they thought you needed to improve. Oh, you need to slow down. Oh, you need to not say guys and gals. You need to, to treat people like adults. Oh, you need to whatever. And all the emphasis was on what you're doing wrong and how you need to fix it. And that's one of my pet peeves with, with uh, performance reviews and performance appraisals. And I actually flipped that around in my corporate jobs and in my corporate career after my first job because I'm like, this just doesn't feel right. And it doesn't feel like it's creating what we want to create in the people that report to us, in the people that we lead. So we actually started doing a bunch of different things. I did a lot of research on performance appraisals, performance reviews, giving feedback, receiving feedback, and discovered that, hey, if you focus on what people do well, you'll get more of that. If you focus on what people do bad, you'll get more of that. It's like the war on anything. You know, we've got the war on drugs. We've got the war on opioids right now. It's a weird word. We've got the war on uh, all, all kinds of different things, right? Whenever we have a war on something, have you noticed that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger? The war on drugs actually made the drug problem exponentially worse than it was before. Why? Because we talked about it... The, yesterday or the day before, absolute power corrupts. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It does. And it doesn't really change people, but it brings out something in them that's in, in probably all of us. We all have a good side and a bad side, a dark side and a light side. We all have the potential to be corrupted. I mean, maybe, maybe some people don't, but I think the vast majority of people, depending on your environment, your circumstances, the people that you're around, you know, inside of us, we always have the choice, but the potential is there. You know, you got the little devil on one shoulder and the little angel on another because that either part of us can be can be awakened at any time. I think we're seeing a, an awakening in the world right now where a lot of people's darker side is being triggered out of fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, um, isolation, depression. All of those emotions are being played on by politicians, by the media, by people that want nothing more than to empower themselves over the rest of us. And that's, it's, it's horrible to watch that play out. And we have to find ways on an individual basis to steel ourselves against that, that negative influence. But a lot of people, a lot of us, we don't even know it's happening. It creeps in through our social media. It creeps in through our, our consumption of television. It creeps in through the people we have conversations with. It creeps in through all different places. And unless we have a true understanding of what's our core, what's important to us and what we are and are not going to let in or out of our subconscious and our conscious mind, it'll get in. It'll get in some way or another. So I've been doing a lot of work last year and this year personally just to, to steal myself against that, to make sure that it doesn't get in. Yet I've noticed that it still sneaks into my life and I, and I push it out as quickly as I'm aware of it, but it sneaks in and I won't be aware of it till I think something or, or something happens that triggers my response that I don't expect from myself anymore. And I'm like, wow, that really upset me. That story, that uh, person telling me this really exacerbated negative feelings in me. It triggered either doubt, worry, fear, scarcity, lack, something that I don't want to feel these days. So we have to be on the lookout for that. So our idiom today for supersize your business was slow and steady wins the race, which is of course an Aesop fable. Remember Aesop was from between 560 and 620 BC or 620 and 560, I guess BC it goes backwards and counts down and then zero, year zero, that would have been an interesting year to be alive, right? Just like the year 2000 was a fun and interesting time to be alive. Hey, every day above ground is a great day, so I'm always happy to be alive. 
but it came from Aesop's fable, of course, the famous, the tortoise and the hare story, you know, the tortoise and the hare have a race, they're having a contest, and the hare takes off like gangbusters and runs into some challenges, assuming he's going to win, he takes breaks, he does all kinds of things, he makes detours, assuming that no matter what, he's still going to beat the tortoise to the finish line, and the tortoise on the other hand, just stays the course, stays focused, stays consistent and persistent and just trudges along at his own little speed and ends up winning the race. Because the hare got distracted by all the shiny objects, the, the turtle did not. He, he minded his own business. He stayed in his lane. He stayed on the course. And if he went off the course a little bit or had to walk around a rock, he just did that at the same steady pace that he was doing. But he was persistent and consistent until he actually won the race. Now, in our race of life, we all get to go at our own pace. We all get to go for what we want, either quickly or slowly, depending on our nature. If somebody tells me to slow down, I get super duper upset and irritated and frustrated. Why? Because my internal drummer is going click, 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 click. And other people's might be going boom, boom, boom. And that works for them. They get to be themselves. I get to be myself. I get to move at my pace. You get to move at your pace. And... That's, that's part of giving ourselves permission to be ourselves. But also, when we give ourselves permission to be ourselves, that means we have to give everyone else permission to be themselves too. And it means we don't get to judge them and decide, you know, what they should or shouldn't be doing. You know, I lived a lot of years um, shooting on myself and letting other people shoot on me because I just went with the wind. I, I flim flammed and went with the direction of the wind. What sounded good? Let's do that. This sounds good. Let's do that. And I didn't actually listen to my own heart and mind and intuition to work toward what it is that I wanted to create in the world. And I created some really cool stuff, was part of some amazing things and they felt good, but it was really fleeting. It was, it was creating something that wasn't really 100% what I wanted to be creating, what, and what I would consider mine, my real, um, desires and purpose. And, and I'm still, I, if I'm perfectly honest, I still struggle with determining and deciding what I want. It's why I'm doing a, a coaching program on that, just that this year on communicating, getting, uh, building up the core foundational things that each and every one of us in some way, shape or form is probably lacking a piece or component of no matter how successful we see someone, we're all human, right? So we look at Elon Musk or we look at Bill Gates or we look at whoever you look up to and admire and we admire them and what they've achieved. <laughs> but we don't know about their journey. We, we know the bits and the pieces about their journey that they've allowed us to see, but we don't really know the real journey, the real story, the real truth. Mm -hmm. We don't even admit the real truth to ourselves. So how would we ever expect to know the real truth or the real story about anyone else? There's clearly people that put out a fake story. You know it's a fake story because you can see it a mile away. I think of uh, marketers and charlatans and online marketers. And it's been going on for all of time, right? There's always been a snake oil salesman or as long as we can remember that people were trying to convince other people to do other things, which is pretty much forever because we're all really in the business of sales and communicating and, and um, cooperating and working with other people. Uh, so that was our idiom for today. And I... I guess I had a lot to say about it. I didn't really think that I did, but I do because I've had lots of experiences with it. And the biggest thing is, you know, you get to be you, let other people be themselves consistently and persistently take action toward what it is that you want. And then if what you try, what you, I hate the word try, if what you act on, if what you do doesn't get you the result you want, adjust and do something else. Act again and again and again in a continuing improving way or ex an experimental, experiential way and as you make progress, measure the progress and look at your results and either it's moving you toward what you want or away from what you want, or it's just dead in the middle and you don't know yet. Maybe it needs more time. Maybe you need to tweak a little something and, and keep plugging away until it gets to work. But know what that end thing is that you're working toward and have everything be moving you toward that. And if it's not yet, and will everything move you toward that? Absolutely not. Will, will, will you always be moving exactly toward your target? Hopefully, yes, but will things happen like coronavirus or you'll get sick or a person you love and care about needs your help and assistance with something that will take you off that direct path to what you want? Absolutely. But all you have to do is step back on the path. You don't have to stay off it forever. Just because you stop doing something or make a mistake, I think of dieting and health. And, and this is something that I know intuitively, but it takes hearing it from someone else and saying, 
uh, hello, human beings do this before I had my epiphany, my aha moment about, oh my gosh, that is totally my problem too. It's what I've been doing too. And it has to do with, say, health and weight loss. Now, <clears throat> health and weight loss, I, like many women, have had a very delusional uh, self-awareness when it comes to health, body image, and things like that. It just It's just been kind of, since I was a teenager, lots of competition, you know, three sisters, four of us, all in the same family, and not really uh, overtly competing, but subconsciously there was always a competition for attention from our parents, from uh, other people, you know, it just, it, it was the nature of my experience and not in a bad way. A lot of times in a good way, it pushed us each to be better versions of ourselves in different situations, better tennis players for myself and my sister. My, my little, my younger sister kicked my butt in tennis for years. She was by far a more, uh, accomplished and a more consistent and persistent tennis player than I was. And even though we played, um, tennis together as partners separately she would kick my butt every time uh, because we we were different we had different skills and abilities and but it made us better the competition made both of us better right <clears throat> because she was always determined to kick my butt and I was always determined to beat her but she always kicked my butt more than I bet her, beat her she but I did win sometimes which kept us going right it's kind of like golf you hit a good hole or two on golf and you go back the next time because it shows you that it's possible for you to, to do better, perform better. And so we keep moving and taking action and moving toward what it is that we want. Our challenge today, our 365 day challenge this year is to do one thing every day that centers you, which is I think why I decided to go for the coaching program, which I've got a big box of stuff from them here that I have to look at. Uh, I did open it and look at it, it was pretty cool. It, it gave me an idea of how I want to step up in my marketing and how I share and how I show up with people. And I knew it would because I've been attracted to other companies that do the exact same thing. I've had coaches that teach you to do the same thing. And I'm like, okay, I've known this for 25, 30 years, maybe, maybe longer. And how often I have actually done it. I did it during the, the early 2000s in our real estate business. My ex-husband and I had real estate businesses and I did it in marketing for that. But otherwise, I've never done it. I don't do it. I know to do it. I know it's effective. I know it works on me. Therefore, I know it'll work with other people that I want to work with. Yet, I kept myself not doing it. Why is that? So that's why I'm doing the coaching program, to unplug the disconnects in me, because we all have them in my beliefs, the beliefs that uh, prevent me from doing the things that I know we that I should do. Guess what? We always all know what we should do. But we talk ourselves out of it. As soon as we have the idea, our subconscious will start serving us up all the reasons why we can't, shouldn't, or better not do that because it's going to kill us. Absolutely positively. And I have those too. And so what I'm trying to do is dig into with the annual centering challenge as part of the little lighthearted daily exercises, do that, but then on a deeper level with the coach, with the coaching program. So our uh, saying today, it happened to be a saying say by Oliver Wendell Holmes was, the mind once expanded to the dimension of larger ideas never returns to its original size. So once we get exposed to a different idea, a different concept, a different way of looking at things, it doesn't have to be different. It might be something that we've actually been exposed to hundreds, if not thousands of times, yet our subconscious won and blocked it out from letting our conscious mind see it and think about it, to even, even hear it or see it. I used to think, and this is really interesting, I used to think that um, my husband just didn't listen to me. He's my ex-husband now, which is probably part of the reason, but I used to think he didn't listen to me and that I would tell, I would literally, I was, I was a hundred percent sure I had communicated things to him, but he literally did not hear them. He and all of us have this ability to filter out information and things that we don't want to hear. If we don't want to see it, we don't want to hear it. We won't see it. We won't hear it. Even if it's right in front of our face, even if it's inches from our nose, we won't see it. We'll be like, we go blind. We go temporarily blind and we don't see it. We don't hear it. We go temporarily deaf. And I used to get frustrated by it. And then I realized that communication wasn't about me just spewing out the information in the way that worked for me, which meant really, really fast because I talk really, really fast and I'm really, really direct. My ex-husband, on the other hand, is a slow and consistent and very um, meticulous communicator for him he needs to tell the story all the way through from beginning to end 
and then get to his point. Me, I just get to the point. And so he has to tell the whole story. And then if he was telling the story and I would ask a question or interrupt, he'd get mad and have to start all over again at the very beginning, even though I'd already heard that. But for some reason, that's how his communication and his brain works. It's just different, right? It annoyed the daylights out of me and I annoyed the daylights out of him because we had such dramatically different communication needs and styles and ways of being. And maybe had I understood that, we would still be together, but I kind of doubt it. But you never know. But it makes you think when you go back and you look at it and you see clear-cut examples of that in your life, and you're like, oh my gosh, that is so true. <clears throat> but he literally didn't, I talked so fast, and if even if I wrote stuff down, he would not see the note because it was not delivered in a way that he could receive that. And we forget that so often in our communication. It's not about us just spewing out all the information about us and how we can serve people and, and how awesome we are. It's about what problem or what challenge and how do the people that we serve, how do they need to hear our message? What do they need to hear from us? What do they need to see so that they can even see us in the sea of massive, overwhelming information that is all of our lives these days? So I thought that was a good one today, but it's about we have to consciously expand our mind and open our mind to see other things and know that we only see what we want to see and believe it. I mean, I think a lot of times we don't believe that we only see what we want to see or hear what we want to hear or uh, experience what we want to experience because we want to follow all of our other beliefs that say life just happens, it's chaotic. And then as long as we think that life just happens and it's chaotic, we have someone or something to blame for when things don't work out the way we want them to. Talk about a cycle of frustration and overwhelm and stress that that creates. And I think COVID's been a huge example of that. People uh, <clears throat> for a long time were, were chugging along in our own little trails and paths and we were making our life work and we were having little problems here and there. And then COVID came along and boom, it was like a massive atomic bomb of, of change and negative energy going across the world because so many people were having to change and evolve at the same time. And you see the percentage of people that took a not took advantage, but that used that change and that challenge to, to move forward and to focus on solutions and make life better. And you've seen the people that have grabbed for power and uh, fear and built on that to build their own little fiefdoms. And it's sad. It's sad to, to sit back and watch the whole thing go because sometimes if you're in the middle, where the people that are really being hurt the most are those in the middle that just don't even realize what happened and what's going on is in... And, you know, those of us that watch it from the outside and see, we're like, okay, that's pretty sad that people are being, you know, manipulated that in that way. But it's their life, their journey. We can't figure it out for them. It's just like we can't do anything to make our kids happy or make anybody feel anything. The only person we can manage and control is ourselves. And the better job we do of that, the better example we set for other people. And the happier our life is. It really, really is. So... That's what I'm working on. Oh, get up and go challenge. It's already the 23rd. Isn't today the 23rd of March? And April 1st will be the next uh, free 30-day get up and go challenge. I want to make some changes and tweaks to that, given some of the things that I'm learning and growing and adding to uh, to make it easier, right? Everybody wants their life to be easier. Well, actually, we say we want our lives to be easier, but we do things consistently to make our life harder. Our subconscious feeds us of all these things to make life harder when we think we really want it to be easier. But if, we're, if we really wanted it to be easier, we would have already made it easier. We would have already let ourselves off the hook on a lot of things and our life would be more smooth and happier and continuously improving and, and going faster and faster and faster toward what it is that we want. Progress, momentum. Those are the things that we really want. And we put all kinds of blocks in our way, even without COVID, we were all, me included, putting slow down blocks and obstacles in our way. So how do we, over the course of this next year, I'm sure I'll talk about this a lot, how do we blow those up and get rid of those for ourselves and for the people that we serve, so that, or our friends and family, just so that all of us can have a better experience here on the planet, because that's what we're here for, is to have the best possible experience that we can for us. All right, uh, so get up and go challenge. I have been putting off, making those tweaks and changes. I need to do it. I don't. I do it <coughs> every day live and unscripted, but I like to have an outline of the topic and the tool that I'm going to share that day and then the, the action item or the homework. So I will I'll 
go through that again and decide what way, what order do I want to do it in. So are there things I want to add or subtract? What worked last time? What didn't? And that's what I've been doing throughout. This will actually be the eighth 30-day challenge I've done since COVID started. It might be the last. I think I said that last time too. It was, uh, it was December. No, December. I said that February I did it again and now we'll do it again in April I might if the year keeps going the way it is I might just continue to do that because it makes me feel better and feel grounded and moving forward toward what I want on a daily basis and if it does that for me I know it's helping other people as well and maybe that's just what we do together through through 2021 I haven't really decided yet it'll come depend on how the coaching that I'm working on goes and what I want to do with that but for right now it's available it's free it's on the get up and go challenge page we have a get up and go challenge group that not very many people come in because it's private and we can have private conversations in there but uh you're welcome to to join you have to answer the questions absolutely in order to get in that private group and it may, mainly it's you know uh i can't remember what it is it's will you do the channel i don't remember i want to say i think it's will you do the challenge what's your email so you don't spam and something else but uh, oh how many challenges have you done or what's your biggest challenge something like that I created maybe I need to update those questions I did that a while ago as well and I read the answers and I need to do more with that but I just read them and I use that to tweak and change what I present and how I present and what type of stories and examples I give during that challenge so that you can do a daily task take a daily action so you can make consistent progress toward what it is that you want in what area or, or in all areas and aspects of your life so that's it that's all I've got today have an amazing day I am going to probably take a nap today to try to catch up on sleep. I've been trying to help out with the new granddaughter in the middle of the night and, and uh, it's, it's it's awesome. I love just snuggling her and cuddling her. I hate when she cries but it also uh, is impacting my morning routine, my life. As I said, each and every one of us have changes and challenges that enter our life all the time. It's how we look at those challenges, how we look at those opportunities and experiences that makes all the difference in the world. All right. That's it. Have an awesome day. I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Questions, hit me up. Uh, I might be napping, but I'll get to it. <laughs> Otherwise, have an amazing day, and I will see you tomorrow and share more of what's working, what's not for me as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Take care.